from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. What I'd really like to do today is inspire you to act and inspire you a little bit with awareness. A lot of what you will hear about at the various tables today is really about just taking action, making copies, understanding what you've got, and documenting. All right, so how many of you have digital cameras, digital cell phones? Is anybody just shooting film anymore? Nothing but film? Yay, one. <laughs> So hopefully the film photographer here still has good tips. Okay, so what happens? Everyone's shooting digital photographs. It's getting very convenient. It's easy. Pixels are cheap. You know, I don't have to keep buying film for my camera. All right, everyone say cheese. Great. Okay, now, so what happens now? I got a digital photo. Uh, not all of you are smiling, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> But it's a nice picture. I want to keep this. This is a nice day. It's a great event. Okay. File name on this photo I've got is 100-2756. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to remember you by that number, so I may wish to take this digital photo, take my memory card out at home, copy these files onto my home computer, and give them some names so that I can understand what's going on. It's ALA Preservation Week, and welcome to the Library of Congress. I may want to describe my photos that way. The camera I used just now is a pretty high-end camera. It's a Canon. I shot in a format that's known colloquially as RAW, but more specifically, there's a camera RAW format known only to Canon and Canon software. So when I go home, I'm going to have to use my Canon software to really process and handle this image the way I want. But that might not be very useful if I want to send this file to my mom to let her know that I actually went to work today. I may want to convert this photo to a format that's a lot more open and accessible to her and her software. So thinking about formats and how you can share photos and make them last for a long time is a very important thing to do. Know how your images can work for you and for your friends and as you're sharing. Okay, so I have my new fancy smartphone that I'm still learning how to use, but it has a camera as well. So I'm going to make you say cheese again. Everybody? Good. OK, you're all blurry. Now with this photo, this is a fun day. This is a very convenient device. I'm going to go back and join Dana at our table later and talk more about digital photos with you. But I'm also going to upload this to my Facebook page. OK? Well, that's good. I've made a copy. It's no longer just on my cell phone. All right, so that's a good thing. But well, what about Facebook? Is that a good place to keep my photos for a long term? I don't know, maybe, I don't know. Have you ever tried to get your photos back off of Facebook? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe even before I send it, I'll give it the exact same cop caption that I'm giving this other photo. This is ALA Preservation Week, and I'll send it up to Facebook. When it gets there, though, it may not have the same file name. And how will I organize it? And how will I remember two years from now, after I've done thousands of other Facebook posts, where's that picture? Where am I going to find it? Okay. So I'm just going to go over briefly. We have some handouts at our table with some just major points about getting organized and thinking about what you need to remember when you're, doing, when you're organizing your digital photo collections. And we can talk specifics about software and cameras if you'd like later. OK, so these are, again, just simple tasks. Identify where you have your, your digital photos. OK, I'm going to copy some onto my main computer at home. I'm going to tell my wife and kids about it so that they know where I'm storing photos should something happen to me. Uh, I'm going to make a list and keep it somewhere where I, I can know I can find it later with all my other important papers, all my financial documents. These, these are important memories for me and my family. Decide which photos are important to you. Okay, as I said, pixels are cheap. It's very easy to shoot lots and lots of digital photos, but they really pile up when you start pouring them on your hard drive at home. You know, maybe you don't have to keep them all. Be selective. Decide which ones are most important to you, the ones that you do have time to take, take care of, paying attention to, and making last for yourself. Get organized, okay? 
There's a lot of different ways people try to organize their digital photo collections. They like to pour them all in one folder on their computer and name the files based on who's in the picture, etc. That's fine. I like to organize my photos by date. So I have a folder that says 2010, and in there there'll be a subfolder that says May, and then I'll make another subfolder in there that talks about Preservation Week, and I'll put all my photos in there. If I stay consistent with that approach, then that's something I can understand and always find later, and the people who may have to go and find my images in the future can find and understand. So get organized and stick with a system that works for you and go with it. Scattering a lot of different systems in a lot of different places can be very confusing. Again, making copies. A lot of people will talk to you today about how you make copies of your digital collections and where to store them. Uh, we recently worked with a group of professional photographers that learned that their colleagues weren't doing a very good job at making backups. So they developed a simple rule, three, two, one. Make three copies, have at least two of them on two different types of media, so that if something about these uh, memory cards aren't supported in the future, maybe I can use a portable hard drive. So two different medium. And keep one copy in a different location from where you live, OK? You never know. Floods, fires, natural disasters happen. Uh, my uh, computer at home, the desk it was sitting on, completely collapsed last month. The entire computer crashed on the floor. Fortunately, I was able to save the hard drive, but I did lose a few disks. I did have a portable hard drive at my brother's house down the street, though. Now, where it gets really complex is in software and managing the digital files. Um, for any of you, all of you who have digital cameras, probably what came with that digital camera is some software that you loaded on your computer. And it has its own methodology and means for helping you organize your photos and label them and catalog them and put dates and make nice albums, slideshows, et cetera. Um, it's good to understand and read about your software about how those images and all those interactions you're having with your images can translate to other places, OK? For example, some softwares let you do lots of different types of tagging and labeling and dating. And it's saving all that information, but only inside that software. If I take my copy of that digital photo that I was cataloging in one place, and I put it on my hard drive and it opened up at my brother's house, he may not see all of those tags and all of those dates and all of those captions that I worked so hard to take care of. So try and learn and understand how you can maintain all of that information with your photos or copy them out to other places so that you can still have it. You don't want to be locked into any one particular system that you're using. Organizing your photos on the web is great convenience for sharing, and we know social media has really taken a boom. F Facebook is just a wonderful popularity site for putting your photos. Um, it, it's really the same principle there. Understand what you're doing and how you are organizing your photos in these places, and what in there is helping you accomplish preservation and what is not. What you have done in, putting, in posting your photos to those sites is made another copy. That's great. But again, all of those social interactions you may have in sharing with friends and tagging photos may not, necessarily, may not necessarily survive if Facebook is no longer popular in two or three years from now and we move on to the next, next best thing. Uh, we have uh, at the table, if you visit me later, there's a, I have a reference to a website that lists lots of different sharing and photo cataloging software programs and websites and the advantages and disadvantages of each. And, and we can talk a little more in detail about what those can do for you. Uh, file format, I mentioned briefly again that this fancy camera saves in a format that only works really well with my Canon software, but it may not be a software that I can handle in other popular picture handling programs. So uh, amongst the most popular wide open formats for digital photography are JPEG, which most of you are probably familiar with, and TIFF, which is tagged image file format. And that saves a lot of image data in a very uh, unprocessed and uh, easily preserved state. It's a very common format. Almost all photo handling software programs can use the TIFF format. And it's an open standard. It's not tied with any one company. So it has advantages for there. And the last point I want to bring up is talking about embedding metadata. Okay. What is metadata? Metadata are those dates, those captions, those tags, keywords, anything you are associating with your digital photos that you're typing out or writing or wanting to preserve with that digital photo 
counts as metadata, okay? And it's the metadata most people care about. It's what's helping you tell you what you've got and what you've saved. Um, there's a lot of um, more and more programs are being helpful at embedding that information inside of those files for you so that you can carry those formats to other places. Uh, it's often in high, uh, supported in very high-end software like Photoshop, but we're hoping more and more camera manufacturers and digital photo software will start looking for it. So whenever you read about metadata and how to preserve it and how to embed it, when you're learning about di your digital cameras and your digital software, that's a good thing. Seek it out and it'll help you. Okay, thanks everyone for your time. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.